Hey guys, Felix here, and I know I told you in the last video that we were going to work on modules in this video, but it's going to work a lot better. It's going to be easier to understand if we first build something worth putting into a module. So we're going to do something else that is extremely useful, and that is slowing down the clock, because let's face it, 50 megahertz is kind of fast, especially if you're trying to do something that you can visually see with your eyes. I mean, if we were to start blinking an LED at 50 megahertz, you wouldn't even be able to tell that it's blinking. Because your eyes only refresh 60 times per second. So uh, that's way too fast to do anything with. Um, so let's slow the clock down. We're going to do that by having a counter and so every time the regular clock ticks we'll count up and when we hit a certain number of clock cycles we reset the counter and we invert the clock out and then we do it again count 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 reset invert and so you see we get this slow much slower out clock speed whereas the inner one is you know just 50 megahertz uh, in here. That's what we're going to do. So let us hop over here and I'm going to go in before we make all of our wiring assignments. What are we going to need in terms of wires and registers? Well, the counter is going to be storing a value as the system runs. So that's going to be a register. And the clock out is going to be holding this value and then this one and that. So it is also going to be a register. But this counter, if we just leave it as a register like this, that's only one bit, it's only going to be able to go up, down, up, down, or 0, 1, 0, 1. That's as high as it can count. So we're going to need to change that. And to do that, let's open a calculator to figure out how to bring this 50 megahertz clock down to 1 hertz. That's a pretty good speed for blinking an LED. Alright, 5 megahertz, 5 with 6 zeros after it. And since we're inverting the clock, Every, every full count, we actually have to invert it twice to get a full clock cycle. So here's an invert, it's a positive edge. Then we invert again, but it's not a positive edge, here it is. So every two inversions is one clock cycle, which means we have to invert it twice as many times and so the final clock speed is the required clock speed is going to be half that so 5 megahertz divided by the two inversions that we're going to have and then we're left with if we wanted to get this down to 1 hertz output then we need 2.5, oh, 50, whoops, 50 megahertz, 50 with six zeros after it, we're going to need 25 million clock cycles for our counter. And after 25 million counts, then that's when we reset, and that's when we toggle the clock output right here. So this is 25 million that's pretty big but you get the idea. 25 million here. So in order to get a counter that can count up that high back to the calculator 
2 to the what will give me a number big enough. Let's try 25. And it looks like that's only... So that's 33 million. And we need 25. So that it should be big enough. So... 24 to 0, that'll give us a total of 25 bits on that counter. Cool. So what we want to do is every time our regular clock ticks on a positive edge, we want to increase the counter by 1. So let's start out with that. We'll use our always pause edge on the clock. counter is going to get increased by 1. All right. Now, if this counter has hit 25 million, then we need to, 1, reset the counter, and 2, invert clock out. So if counter is 25 million, and you can do this really nice thing with an underscore here to help space out your zeros and it kind of just ignores it. It knows it's part of the number. So that's handy. If counter is that big, we're going to reset counter. So we'll just set everything to zero. And then clock out is going to equal clock out. And we can also use this to signify that we just want to invert it. Clock out equals inverted clock out. Cool. One more case that we have to cover. As soon as the FPGA powers on, all of our registers could come on at random states. We don't know if they're coming coming on at zero or one. So when it when we push the reset button, we just want to make sure that everything's at zero. So let's put another pause edge, but this one will watch reset for a positive edge. And if reset hits a positive edge. We want counter to be zero, and we want to make sure that our clock out also starts at zero, just so we know what it is, and it's consistent every time. Okay, so this will be running. Clock out is going to give us our one megahertz clock, or one hertz, sorry. So now, we should be able to hook that up to an LED. So let's hook that one up to LED number 6, shall we? LED index 6 equals clock out. And then we have our RGB LED from the last video, which we're not going to use this time, so let's delete that. All right, so we're watching for LED number six to be blinking once every second. Cool, let's try it out. Build. Okay, we finished building, but we got an error. Let's take a look at it. Warnings, warnings, where's the error? Okay. Signal counter, that's... Counter 24 is connected to multiple 
drivers oh I see what has happened when this first comes on the clock ticks but the reset is has also just happened so this tries to assign counter, but then this tries to assign counter again. So what we need to do is combine these like this with an or. So we're going to have the clock or the reset on a positive edge. And then we we'll use if statements here. If reset is a 1, then we know that it's just been pressed. And this can be, we'll make this an else. And then here's all the normal stuff that happens. So if it hasn't been reset, do the normal stuff. But if it has been reset, then set everything to zero. And we'll delete that because we've incorporated it up here. Let's try again. Oh, we got another error again. Let's see what happened. Error. Mix of blocking and non-blocking assignments. In line 28, register, oh, clock out is line 28. Oh, oh, why didn't you guys tell me? Okay, we'll make that all non-blocking. Now let's try. And another error. It looks like, oh, RGB is completely unrouted. Right, because we deleted it. Let's get rid of RGB because we're not using it anymore. Now what? Oh. Aha! It finished building without errors. See, this is one of the things that we have to... We just have to work with, uh, when we're using FPGAs, sometimes you do some, you do something in the hardware that it's not happy about and it takes a while to debug it because you can't exactly look inside that little chip there and see what all the gates are doing. Okay, okay let's, let's go ahead and upload ahead. this. Look at, Look that. at that. Right here, right you can, here, see, you can it. see it. LED, LED number, number six, six on, on off, off every, every second. second. Sweet. Sweet. So, all of that, we have now learned how to divide our clock and make it slower. We still have access to the 50 megahertz clock, of course, but now we have a 1 hertz clock that we can hook up to things wherever we want. So that is a really very useful thing that you will probably use in all kinds of projects. And in the next video, we will actually talk about modules uh, because this code is starting to get kind of long in here. And this clock divider could be pretty useful. Uh, maybe we want to divide it to different speeds so we have multiple different clocks at running at different speeds so in the next video we're gonna put this into a module for all of that see you next time